Okay, what I got here is, uh, this is after I'm still running with the little resistor trick there. Yep, getting nice and toasty. Uh, you can get up to 275 degrees Celsius, so I'm sure you could take more, but that's temporary, so. Uh, what we see here is IGT for cylinder number one. And it's being triggered by that. And then these are all the other cylinders. This this actual IGF signals. There. Let's see, I see all the IGF signals. And Looks better than I thought it was going to. Uh, something I noticed today and now is uh, the exhaust smells different. Probably because of burning up more of the fuel. It actually bothers me. I, I can usually run my car or my garage with the door open and not bother me so much. It could be the wind it's just burning my eyes. Now what this is is the IGT signal. Now when I read the tech manual, I thought it says IGT signal is constant. And I have a three point. I estimate at 3.2, 3.3. Now I thought this was constant from reading the things I've read, but, but it's not. When you increase the idle, it'll go, it'll lose about one millisecond. This has absolutely nothing to do with it. My, my car been, it didn't do it today though. It seems to be idling a little high. Something, price, something totally unrelated. It didn't do it, it doesn't do it on drive. So there's that. Appears to be about three. It'll go down to about 2.3 when it picks up RPM. A little disappointed that I thought I was gonna stay at 3.3 because that's kind of what it says, but it doesn't. But you see, uh, if you actually use the OAM igniter, uh, you will get even less. You lose even more when you use the OAM igniter, so it's still better off. Not. The ignition coils don't seem too picky about firing, so I uh, put a I tried bipolar and polarized capacitors and added them to the igniter, and uh, pretty much if you put a polarized capacitor, it'll throw off the engine. And it doesn't like it. put a bipolar capacitor to it, and you get the same dwell, but then it drops off slower, so what happens is one millisecond later, uh, it drops to about half a minute, so if the coils aren't too picky about firing, I could maybe pick up Uh, an extra millisecond as well, just by adding a capacitor to it. I'll use the one I was using before. The, the other one didn't quite work. 
parts of them. This is something I pulled out of a power supply. It's actually not your typical capacitor. Mm -mm. Okay. Alright, this is hooked up to uh, IGT for number one. It's kind of hooked into it. I'm not too worried about the wires because it's, like I said, it's tempering. to IGT one. This is uh, IGT signal one. Uh, connected to a positive. See that? Now normally that's uh, not good. I mean, for a firing emission coil, but the ignition of coils trigger uh, probably doesn't care. Uh, so I can't. I can't. Oop, uh, it's hard to hold all this together. But basically, it uh, might be able to get an extra millisecond if I use that capacitor. Not quite sure what happened. I was playing with it. Can't hold three things at once. But uh, if I, I've been putting higher voltage into the igniter, so if I put a higher voltage in the capacitor, it'll take longer to slope off and uh, should get more dwell. That's all. The other thing is, my that was my whole idea was to create, uh, I knew it was going to be sloppy. Just create little uh, high steers, whatever they call it. But I was gonna make it slope longer, like it was, and then use a uh, something like a Smith trigger, and that would, even though so it'd be three milliseconds of a square, and it slopes, but the Smith trigger doesn't care. It'll keep it up until there's like it reaches its threshold and turns off the. Did work, uh, so I can't add dwell. So it's just buying more things and playing with it. All right.